Hi and welcome back, you're with Terry from Bonsai Tree and today I'm going to be working on this ficus which I purchased from a local enthusiast. If you find the following content helpful then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. When I purchased the tree it was little more than a stump but over the last few years I've slowly been developing some structure on the tree. When I first saw the tree I thought there was much potential that it has and today I hope to explore some of that with you and in the process develop it further. One of the most impressive features of this tree of course as you can see is its very powerful trunk and the strong movement but there are many areas which require a lot of improvement before this is going to be a very pleasing bonsai to look at. For those of you that are interested I'm not 100% certain on the species so you're welcome to comment below but I think it's a ficus micro or macro carpa rather. There's a couple of these lesions on some of the leaves and in my recent experience with another tree that was similar where we actually sent the leaves off for analysis, this is sunburn and not a fungal or other bacterial infection or problem. Well of course the first step in order to improving the structure of the tree is to be able to see the structure and so in order to do that I need to cut off all the leaves and for that purpose I'm going to be using a, deep, a pair of defoliation shears. I should also mention that the timing of this work is the late summer period in South Africa where I live and so this is taking advantage of the warmth that remains and the continuous growth of the species during this period and then also going into the early part of autumn. The technique of defoliation is generally spoken of in the context of reducing leaf size. However, as I intend to show this tree one day with leaves removed so that you can actually see the ramification, it's important to remove the leaves so that you can improve the structure because you're able to see it much clearer. Performing a full defoliation of a tree like this is going to weaken it somewhat and so I would advise that you don't defoliate or fully defoliate a tree that is weak and rather only apply the technique to very vigorously growing trees such as this one. There was a fairly large section of trunk which remained in this area that I removed or reduced with carving bits. Now with a sound base on which to callus onto you can see this tissue is forming along the edges of the scar. Before carrying on I'm just going to quickly remove the leaves that I've cut off and then also just clean up the surface of old fertilizer. It's always nice to work in a clean space as possible. Possible. I can then go ahead and remove this sucker like growth which is low down on the trunk and which I obviously cannot use and to do that I'm going to be using a trimming scissors, a large trimming scissors from Canishin. It's one of my favorite tools in fact. With the structure now revealed I'm just going to trim the branches which are clearly too long for use. Of course those branches where the girth of the branch is not thick enough to your liking those should be left uncut as cutting them will cause a back budding on that branch and the thickening will slow down. So of course my cuts are being made according to a imaginary profile or outline that I have in mind for the tree or the future view or image of the tree. If however you're trying to build ramification then it's important that you cut every tip. Defoliation on its own does not produce inner buds. This must be accompanied by cutting the tips because that's where the auxins are sitting and cutting the tips off causes a redistribution of those auxins creating new buds and those buds are then able to develop in the additional sunlight that you've allowed into the structure of the tree by removing the leaves in the first place. When you're developing this profile, be sure not to only view the profile from the front of the tree. You definitely need to turn the tree 90 degrees or turn it sideways so that you can see it from this profile and prune to that as well. Viewing your trees from different angles or perspectives from the side and from the top actually affords great views which help you to develop the volume of the canopy as you will very easily see where the strong and weaker areas are that you need to work on. Before I proceed on to wiring the tree, it's a good idea to remove any growth which you are not planning on keeping. Not only does this save time on wiring unnecessary branches, but it also reduces the amount of wire needed to wire a complete tree. Branches that you should be looking at removing are those that generally grow straight down and also branches that are emerging at say two, anything more than two at a particular junction. 
I'm very confident that over time this large scar will heal over, but it is really going to take a very long time. However, one of the characteristics of this species, the ficus, is that plant material fuses to each other very easily. By that I mean branches and roots fusing to the trunk or one another. When you understand the species you're working on, sometimes you can use some of its natural growing habits to your advantage. In this case, any growth which emerges close to the scar, I'm going to wire down close to it and get it to fuse on the other side. Every time I do this it's going to dramatically reduce the size of the scar that needs to be healed over. Although very thin at the moment, this branch I think is going to be very important for the future canopy or the structure of the tree. The first step will be to wire the branch slightly down and then you can see that I have not trimmed off any of the leaves at the tip and this is to ensure that the branch will continue extending and become thicker. I can now continue on with wiring the remainder of the tree. It's always a good idea to start wiring tree from the lowest branch moving up into the apex. Wiring from the lowest branch sets the tone or the feel of branches for the rest of the tree and also ensures that you have sufficient space in which to work and create volume of ramification. Anodized aluminium wire is the ideal material to use. It is very malleable and therefore shouldn't damage the bark of this ficus at all. Depending on the kind of bends that you wish to put into the branches, this will determine the angles of the wire. If you're looking for more sinuous type bends, then a very gentle angle on the wire will be required. Alternatively, if you're looking for exaggerated bends, then the, the coils should be much closer together. It's advisable to consider what the branches will look like in 5, 10, 15 years from now. Therefore, a bend that looks perhaps a little bit weird and exaggerated at the moment might actually thicken and ease or soften out over time. There's currently a fairly large negative space or open area near the front and in the upper portions of the tree. However, this young branch is going to be very important for filling this space in the future. It is a good idea that while it's still juvenile and very flexible that I give it some movement and position it roughly where I want it to be for the future growth. Finally, I can now wire the apex. The branches in the apical area are fairly close to one another and so my intention in the space is to display them out slightly and create a larger volume with them. Once wiring the apex is complete, the final step is just to trim the tips of these branchlets to ensure that they conform to the profile. If you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it, please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video. I'm very happy with the progress of this ficus today. I've not had the tree for too long and so in that very short space of time it's actually really come a long way. That is testament to the speed at which this species in the right location can actually develop. I will now move the tree back onto the bench but give it a bit of shade because otherwise the new growth might actually get sunburn. I probably won't be doing any further work on this tree this season. I expect a bunch of new shoots to emerge from the branches especially in light of the new uh, amount of exposure to sunlight that they will be getting. After after having applied wire to a thin barked species it's always advisable to keep a watch on the wire and for wire bite. Thank you once again for watching. If you haven't done so yet please do like and subscribe to my channel for more of these sort of videos. Till next time take care and goodbye.